Hello everyone and welcome back to Gone Home. Um, I didn't check out this bar last time, so I might do that. Yep, it's a bottle. A uh, letter. Aha! From the desk of Donald Fripp's publisher, Mercury Books. March 8th, 1976. Dear Mr. Greenbrier, I write to inform you that unfortunately Mercury Books will be unable to publish a follow-up to The Accidental Pariah. Despite the low sales of The Accidental Savior, we went ahead with the publication of the second books in hope of John Russell's series Catching On. However, sales of the second book have in fact been lower than those of the first, and so our stewardship of the series must end here. It has been a pleasure working as your publisher, and we wish you, and John Russell, the best of your future endeavors. Ah, shit, dude. Heartbreaking. As someone who, you know, wants to be an author, rejection is something I have not yet had to experience and fear it a little bit. Yeah, that's a lot of, a lot of books. Anyway. Samantha, please give this to your mother. Uh, Janice, thank you for having, uh, Danny over to your new home. He has missed having his friend Samantha in the neighborhood very much. Danny asked if he could lend Samantha his Nintendo Street Fighting tape, and I gave my permission. He needs to spend less time with these games anyway. No hurry returning it. Let Samantha know that she is welcome back to her house to visit any time. Sincerely, Mary Schultz? Uh, Schultz? I don't know. Oh. When you live in one place your whole life, your next door neighbor is kind of like your default friend. And Daniel only got weirder over the years. So moving away has been a good excuse to, like, not see him anymore. Oh. But he did always have the good Nintendo games. Maybe I'll give him a call. Three, I did it. Read note, Katie, please tell mom and dad. Sorry about the stuff that's missing, Sam. Okay. Uh, all right. Oh, another note. Hi, Lonnie. We learned her name. So if you wanted to come over to my house still this afternoon, that would be cool. I can drive. It's kind of far. But I can drive you home too, so hopefully that's fine. Right back and leave this in my locker if you still want to, and we can meet in the parking lot after six, Samantha. Yeah, I'm totally in. See you there. Then I'm gonna kick your butt. Get ready. L. <laughs> Street Fighter drawing. So you know what they say about the best laid plans of mice and men? Yeah, it turns out it applies to Street Fighter too. At least I worked up the courage to walk into the 7-Eleven and ask for a turn, but... All that practice at home did not exactly translate in the wild. So after I was finished getting my butt kicked, I followed them outside while they smoked. And that was when she asked me if I was that psycho house girl. Ooh. But then she said she's always really wanted to see the psycho house. Her name is Lonnie. She's coming over tomorrow. That's nice. All right, let's read crumpled paper. Katie, please, what have you found on Tom Mom and Dad the attic? Okay, we have a goal. We have our heading. So we have a couple rooms that are locked. Because that room, that corner room, this room here, is locked. Was that door locked as well? Unsure. We also have this combo lock. Uh, was there anything I missed here? Uh, it's like a thing in like a book or something. But no, all right, I'll, I'll leave the doors open if I feel like I'm missing something. So I'll leave this one open because the combo lock. Um, this one had, is this door, right? Or is this a closet? Closet, closet door. Oh, turn that off. Uh, 
Okay. So that hallway door is locked. Uh, upstairs. I haven't gone upstairs yet, so we'll go upstairs. Here we go. Uh, here. We'll help with the creepy atmosphere slightly. Newspaper clipping. Boone. Uh, county controlled burn schedule. Janice Greenbrier. Yep. All right. Good. Glad mom is doing good. Um, in her career. Here we go. Temporary personnel transfer to aid in the upcoming prescribed burn operation. Uh, move to a slightly different place. All right. Personal calendar, weekly planner. Uh, Monday couples, something, cooking class, take ass, apron. Uh, ballroom dancing, canceled. Couples, something, canceled. Cooking class, canceled. Uh, uh, cooked a big meal for... Jerry and Sam? Terry. Terry. Okay. Lights. Sick. Cassette case. Bratmobile and Potty Mouth. What? Uh, uh, that's a little weird. For Sam. Let. Uh, uh. Uh. Hell yeah, Cherry Bomb. Uh, something you're gonna owe me for this one? You're gonna... Is it love? I can't tell. Oh, fuck. It was there for a second. Like this one. Like this one. Oh. It's weird hanging out with girls. Daniel was around ever since I was little, and other girls? I don't know. But being around Lonnie is, like, instantly just right. I gave her the grand Psycho House tour and took my revenge on Super Nintendo. And it was like, I don't know, I finally found someone I feel normal around. I drove her home and she gave me this tape and said, you have got to listen to this. I haven't stopped playing it since. I like that you can hear the, like, smile in the voice. Sorry, I just broke my neck. All right, sternly worded leather. To her, it may concern I, Samantha Greenbrier, and 17 years old, and am therefore an independent, fully functional human being. The fact that you still forbid me from going into the city on my own is frankly absurd. Compared with Katie, who's only three years older than me, and you allowed her to go all the way across an ocean to another continent on her own. I just want to spend an evening in a normal, totally safe city on my own, like a human being, and since you may also remember that I have my own car now, you can't really stop me. Warmest regards, your daughter, Samantha. Well, I think she said her piece. No, thank you. I, having some forms of neurodivergency, can hear electricity, and these things instantly give me a migraine. It's so awful. I hate it, um, like, in real life. And I'm also the kind of person, um, I used to have an extension cord run behind my bed, um, and we used it to charge phones, um, in, in an old apartment we had, uh, me and my wife, and I could hear it I could hear it buzz, and I go, can you hear that? I feel like the bed is going to be set on fire. And she's like, no, it's fine. <laughs> so we did our very best to, oh, didn't mean to do that, did our very best to ignore it, uh, or make it safer, but, uh, I don't like it. Hell yeah, yeah. I have this on one of my SoundCloud playlists because of this game. Yeah, I know these songs. All right, shut your mouth. I maybe should not have looked through all of her fucking clothes. It was fucking weird. It was weird. <laughs> uh, 
cartridge. Adventurous, the cat returns. The Nintendo is gone. Chun Li moves. Hell yeah. Practicing your Street Fighter games. God, I've never been able to get these to work. I, I, I just can't. Ah, more games. What is this? Journey of Crystal. It's probably like another game that the makers have made. That'd be really cool. Uh, Super Spitfire. Okay. Uh, through that. Sorry, Sam. Here, I'll put it back where I found it. Uh, KSNC presents Sonic Boom 94. Hell yeah. Uh, hell yeah, Social Distortion. Uh, Fairgrounds. That's a nice poster. Oh. Man, Sam had this in like fourth grade. I love the like two pieces of paper in it. Grab book. The Holy Bible. Why do you need that, Sam? <laughs> Board game. Oh, shit. Got your number. Who's got a crush on you? Hell yeah. Oh. The King's Labyrinth. Ooh, more modern writing. Chapter two. Fraying threads. Captain Allegra, still in her flowing skirt and sturdy jerkin, descended the single shining thread into the lower cavern of the labyrinth. She and the first mate, on their own now, grew closer to their goal, the throne room of the dead immortal king of the island. The first mate slid down the line onto the stone floor. She swept chalky bone dust from the front of her canvas trousers and looked up at Allegra. The silken thread, nigh unbreakable thanks to the enchanted moths that inhabited the island, trailed behind, leading their way back to the entrance. From further into the labyrinth, a moaning began to echo. The moaning grew louder and clearer. It turned into words from some ancient language they could not understand the king's cursed voice. The hairs on Captain Allegra's arms stood on end. She looked back at the first mate, whose eyes remained locked on the blackness of the passage for a moment too long before noticing the captain's gaze. The first mate nodded silently ahead. Following the king's ghostly song deeper and deeper into the labyrinth, they came upon a rocky gap spilling forth otherworldly blue light. The great basin of the dead king's throne room lay below, skeletal and robin rotted robes. The king was hunched over the blue orb, topping his royal scepter. Shadows of his bony fingers danced on the walls like ghouls. As he sang, wailing souls flowed in, one by one through the cracks of the cave walls, pulled into the orb. <laughs> the orb. Causing it to glow brighter and brighter. Behind the king, a long staircase hewn from rock led below into the chamber from a passage at the top. Allegra said, We have the advantage in numbers. I will draw his attention, and then you. But the first maid interrupted. No. I'm smaller and quicker, and you know of dealing with mystic energies like these. I will circle to the other side, get the king's attention, and lead him on a merry chase. She held up the silk line, all traced by this invisible thread, of course. Allegra said, It is a good plan, but perhaps we should go together. The first mate shook her head. You know this is our best chance. Don't be afraid for me. They grasped hands and exchanged three tight squeezes, their palms growing warm. The first mate tied the shining thread to the belt of her trousers, gave a quick salute with a wink, and dashed off. Allegra waited, staring vigilantly across the top of the stairs where the first mate was to appear. The king continued his... Wait, no. No! The singing stopped. The king turned and began walking up the stairs. Allegra wanted to call out, to do anything to stop the first mate from rugging heading first in the danger. She tried tugging on the line to signal her. No use. The king was nearly at the top of the stairs when the first mate burst through the passageway. She skidded to a stop. Even from across the yawning basin, Allegra could see the first mate's eyes grow wide. She turned and ran. Summoning his undead power, the king left the ground, levitating, gliding behind her with distressing speed. From Sasarm dank passage much too far away, Allegra heard the first mate scream. She was already running towards the sound. The line in Allegra's hand went taut, then shuddered. It fell slack to the stone floor. As Allegra ran, she was gathering the line, twisting it around her arm. She came to its end, and the unbreakable thread dangled limply. Its end, shredded and frayed in her hand, she tossed it to the ground and ran, ran, ran. 
that's some gay shit. <laughs> I haven't mentioned that. Like, I very much know what this game is about. And uh, I very much know that it's gay. <laughs> but, uh, wow, Sam. I thought I was pretty, like, upfront with my writing, but, uh... Staggy! Woo! Staggy! <laughs> oh, I'm crying. Oh, I'm crying. For Christmas this last year, I received a dinosaur. I think it's meant to be a T-Rex. Um, I named it Tex. It's just fucking huge. It's a big dinosaur. And the reason why I got it is because when I saw it in the store, I cried. I sobbed. So hard. <laughs> Lamp. Why would you leave Steggy, Sam? It's Steggy. Oh, that's nice because it changed because I saw the thing. Weezer. <laughs> All right. A magazine. Uh, music. Dinosaur Jr. Hell yeah. I don't know who that is. Good fellow. Uh, a bunch of classic books in very lame covers. All right. Button. Oh, the misfits. Perfect. Okay. Put the cup up. Nail polish. Tissues. A drawer that is broken. All right. Any. Good stuff. Brochure. Okay. Pre-college program for young scholars. Sam, I think the creative writing track would be perfect for you. Oh. Full scholarship. Just send in your writing. I would. Yeah, I, uh... I'm in college currently. I'm a history major, technically. But, uh, I'm in it for... Wait a minute. If I do this... If I do this... Oh. Oh. Uh, but I'm in it to, to, to write. All my classes have like a... I've done that already. I have a writing focus. Um, and it's super worthwhile. Enter combination. I don't have a combination. <laughs> I don't know who any of these people... Wait, no, that's not true. Was she in the Virgin Suicides? Are these real people? I think they are. Meow. All right. Hell yeah, X Files. Wait. Can't interact with anything. Okay, that's what I thought. Oh. Oh, hell yeah. Girl power. <laughs> Oh, but I think uh, going to college kind of for myself was super worthwhile. God, could you imagine having to have two doors to your room? E yikes. A bathroom. Why is there not a mirror there? <laughs> Lonnie rules. Jeez. This storm is super aggressive. Oh. Blood. It's just hair dye. It's cool. Oh. Lonnie brought her hair dye over today. She said, I need to fix these roots. Think you could help? Dying hair is weirdly intimate. I don't know if I've touched someone else's scalp before. <laughs> it's pretty intimate, right? It felt intimate. We looked into the mirror together after, and I expected her to say something about how it looked crappy or good or whatever. But that's when she said, you're so beautiful. Oh. And she was looking at me. Right in that moment, I wanted to say something. But I waited. And the moment was gone. Oh, heartbreaking. It's okay, girly. We do it all the time. That is a normal part of life. You can't be witty and funny all the time it just doesn't work like that sometimes you miss the moment and it's okay there will be other moments i'll close their drawers for them oh shit except that one for fuck's sake oh mitten what girl <laughs> G 
girl? Where did it go? All right. Mitten. Uh, our cat. Caitlin, age five. Hell yeah. Good for me. Family photo. That is some 80s-tastic hair. Hell yeah. All right. I'm sorry. Put that back normal. Dear Jan, oh honey, let me tell you, I understand how you feel. Bob and I have had our down, uh, pen, epi that's not episode, down, per periods, periods, periods. Oh, it's become a bit of a way of life, actually. You get used to each other. You live, uh, your own lives in the same home. The kids grow up, they go away. Ugh. What a terrible way to live. I'm sorry. This isn't helping, is it? Don't worry. Terry will get over whatever's distracting him. Things will go back to normal. And as for Sam being distant, uh, that's a teenager for you. Nothing to worry about. In the meantime, though, this controlled burn. That sounds like uh, quite the adventure. But let's cut to the chase. Uh, this new uh, n manager. Ranger, Ranger, <laughs> they sent, that's what I want to hear about, Ranger Rick. You've got to be kidding me. It's too perfect. You have to tell me everything and send pictures. I want the whole package. Wait, that sounded wrong. Uh, keep your chin up until uh, Terry is out of his slump. And in the meantime, write more letters to your old friend, Carol. She adores them, Carol. Well, I'm glad that mom has... A close friend that she can confide in. Oh, a book. Walt Whitman, Leaves of Grass. All right. It's a poetry book. Uh, take your time. I'm glad to have it in good hands. Oh, but it's from Ranger Rick. <gasps> Scandal. <laughs> uh, let's check the rest of this room. Sorry, I keep shifting. Check the rest of this room. All right, uh, before I move on. Postcard, oh, from London. Uh, dear mom, dad, and Sam, I am on the channel. Uh, this is my second passage through the channel. I'm on my way back, uh, from London, this time going to Brussels, Belgium. Sorry I didn't write you on the way to London, but I was too excited about the channel. Uh, London was great. Uh, dad, I know you've always wanted to visit, and I think you really should. You'd love it. Uh, if you all wanted to come back here as a family sometime, I guess I could be convinced. Love you all. Uh, Katie. Cool. Uh, I'm so nice. Grab book. Ah, the Bible. I'll put that over there for now. Anything else? Anything saucy, father? No? All right. Put that back down there. Telephone again. Is that underwear? Clean your fucking room, dude. <laughs> Yikes. Hamper. Ah! It's bathroom. Hairbrush. It's bathroom time. Bathroom. Hello? Anything good in here? Uh. After the honeymoon. If you can't figure that out, um, yikes. Couldn't be me. <laughs> Just be normal. How does that sound? Ugh. My wife hates these. She hates these sliding doors so, so much. I think they're cool, but I also think they can break too easily. Grab book. Florals in still life. Watercolor. Ugh. My uh, mother-in-law has been practicing watercolor, and she gave me a very, very lovely painting uh, that I plan on putting over my desk pretty soon here. I just need to find a sturdy uh, nail because uh, I only have those like crappy Ikea ones and I'm afraid that if I use that, it'll just fall apart. Oh, a note. Katie, mom and dad were going to make up the guest room for you to stay in over the summer, but you came home on such short notice that they weren't around to do it. You can use my room if you want. I won't be needing it anymore. Sam. I mean, yeah, for the first night, I guess, because, Jesus, this really has nothing in it. But it's all my shit. That's nice. 
composition book. Samantha Greenbrier, Ghost Hunter Journal. Hell yeah. Sighting Journal. August 31st, 1994. 1, 19 a.m. A tall shadow in the upstairs hall. When I rounded the corner, no one was there. How tall was Uncle Oscar? Note, I was not wearing my glasses. <laughs> September 3rd, 1994. At 12.44 a.m. A faint voice coming from the bottom of the stairs. I said, hello, did not investigate, probably was the furnace. September 9th, 1994, 4, 11 p.m. Poured milk from the carton in the fridge. It was spoiled. Pretty sure I read that spirits can sour milk. Milk was just bought yesterday. October 9th, 1994, 11.24 p.m. Lonnie says she feels a presence in the TV room. I suddenly begin to feel cold. We build a protective pillow fort. And that pillow fort was up for like a month. <laughs> October 22nd, 1994, 11 p.m. to 12 a.m. Lonnie, oh, Lonnie and I employ a Ouija board as a medium. Disturbing messages are conveyed from the other side. Oscar is definitely here. October 28th, 1994, at 10 p.m. Uh, October 29th, 4 a.m. Oh, I see. So it's overnight. Enlisted Lonnie to stay up all night and help patrol premises, recording any signs of otherworldly presence. Lonnie reported many sightings, but all remain unconfirmed. Possible ectoplasm in the attic, uh, probably due to leaky roof. Simple taken and just, or sample taken and just in case. Despite our best efforts, we both fall asleep around 4 a.m. All in all, a successful night. <laughs> Very good. I think maybe perhaps watching too many scary, uh, movies <laughs> too late at night. But, uh, Oh, we have the red room. Sam's dark room. Do not enter if the red lights are on. Well, they're on. It's locked. <laughs> cool. Well, we've we've done the thing where like you go to the the big bad evil guy, but you're not quite ready to face him yet. Yeah. Examine note. Halloween show. The Misfits. Don't forget your costume. Uh, I'm assuming that's Lonnie's band. Or a band Sometimes Lonnie likes. Sometimes you just have to lie to mom and dad. Like when Lonnie asked me to see a band with her and stay over at her friend's place in the city after. That's a lie to mom and dad situation. But it was so worth it. The girls on stage were just so loud and real and awesome. <laughs> And everybody was moving together like one huge tide of sound. Between two songs, Lonnie leaned over and said, How do you like your first show? I was so happy. I felt tears starting in my eyes. And then she up and hugged me. Oh. I think she could tell. That you were crying? I mean, that's fair. Examine form. Uh... Ah, Ranger Rick is saying we're so fucking good. Oh my god. And we've got a tape. And that's all we got of that. <laughs> all right. So we can't come back here. Uh, uh, was there somewhere else I missed? This was bedroom. Uh, maybe their JPEGs have a key bind code or something. God, how do you need some? Ew. Why do you keep it there? Why do you keep your condoms there? Uh, maybe, like, it'll... Hell yeah, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Fuck yeah. Uh, like, maybe the combination will be here. Why don't you just keep it in your drawer? Oh, business card. Didn't see that before. Unknown Dimension Literature. Hell yeah. New publisher. Good job, Dad. Great work. Uh... Try to, like, open that. That's not how that works. All right. Let's see. <coughs> Anything. There's nothing on the back of Mitten. I'm looking for... 
like a like a combo. There's nothing in the tree rebinder book. I'm not. There's nothing under. Oh wait, I didn't open this. Ugh! Yikes. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, the fugitive, all the president's men. Uh, Silence of the Lambs. I know what that one is. Uh, The Sound of Music and the Swiss Family Robinson. Uh, a funny story. That would not fit on that fucking tape. You could fit Swiss Family Robinson on that tape, but uh, Sound of Music's long as hell. All right. I was just checking. Um, so no, nothing in here. Fuck. Father, could you have your, could you have your shit in an easier to understand place? Mmm, no, of course not. All right, combination. No. How do I exit? Okay. Uh. Oh, slip. Uh, C, not a challenging assignment. Oh, sorry, Sam. What's this? Brochure. This is the one me and my dad are building when I go for a ride when it's done. Uh, it's a motorcycle. Brum, brum. Yep. Not seeing anything. Shit. Well, uh, is there like a basketball? Sam, do you have a basketball for your little basketball hoop? Not here. All right. Well, uh, fuck. <laughs> I don't know where to go. Oh, oh, I did that one already. Maybe there's a place downstairs I missed? Is there like a room under the stairs kind of vibe? No. Okay. So we haven't gone on this side yet. Tombs of youth. Toms. No, that's not interactable. Okay. That sounds like a muck at Minecraft chicken. Did you hear that? Uh. Shit, maybe I missed something. Okay, so that room is locked. Can't go there yet. Uh. Well, fuck. I guess I'll have to find where I'm supposed to go. Uh. And I'll know when we meet up next time. Sounds good to me. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this little exploration. And uh, we'll see you next time for more. Bye-bye.